in this video we're going to convert arrays or two arrays into one single array where we have a proper data structure here as you can see in here of our scatter chart this is basically a scatter chart that is built on uh, two different arrays here and this is very useful because we're going to create a line chart eventually out of it and you can see this line chart will not make any sense but Understanding how to convert two arrays into a single array that is a data structure with x and y values is essential for this and it's a quite advanced skill as well. In this video we're going to answer one of the viewers question which is how to convert arrays into multi-dimensional arrays or data structures in Chart.js. And this question came from not from my video but from my email. And uh, the topic here is quite on point here because I quite commonly say data structures or basically multi-dimensional arrays is very powerful. However, many might say, well, how do we convert then our array data into a proper data structure or multi-dimensional arrays? So in this video, I'm going to cover that and going to show you step by step how to do it. So for this, we're going to create a very simple chart. And this chart will be a scatter chart that we convert into a line chart. And that scatter line chart will be converted into the data structure that we have. So what we're going to do here is first of all to go to chartjs3.com getting started. And for some reason I get this error here on my Google Chrome, but on Firefox it works fine. So why I do not know. However, what we need here basically is just the default code here. So I'm going to copy this chunk of code here. And this code here can be pasted in here. And once you paste it in here, I'm going to just cut out basically my title here this is for me you don't have to copy this of course and then let's save that and then go back here and refresh so once we refresh we have now a bar chart here however i don't want a bar chart i want a scatter chart and that scatter chart will eventually contain values that will become a line so what we're going to do here is just very simple we're going to convert this into a scatter type so if we do this we refresh here you can see here now we get this but of course our data structure is not suitable for basically the multi-dimensional arrays which is an array with multiple arrays within the array that's basically is which is what we call a data structure in professional terms is not suitable so or is not set correctly so what i'm going to do here is the following i'm going to show you here basically what we need to do and then afterwards we're going to convert this into a proper structure. So I'm going to say here, uh, let's say here the data, and then in this data, this is of course an array, and this array, the comma in here, and then we say here the following, we say x, and then here we would be, let's say the x value would be very simply one, two, three, four, all up to seven. So we say here one, and then our y value, which is basically the labels here, oh sorry, not the labels, but the, uh, 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 this one basically or the data here because this will be eventually de defining the, the y-axis but of course this here these labels will be disappearing so we're going to copy that put in there and I realize what I'm saying is incorrect the labels here is supposed to be on the x value here this is one two three four up etc etc up to seven so we have this here once we have this comma and I'm going to just paste this in here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste it seven times. And this is one. But of course, obviously, if you're working with JavaScript arrays, it is called zero. Because why index uh, value zero, but we call it the first element. All right. So we have this here, two, three, four. Oh, make sure that this is correct. Five, six, and seven. So we have this. And what I want to do here, these here will be here. This will be 12, 6, 9, 12 three and nine all right so we have this if i save this now and refresh you can see here now we have this nice value points or data points here so what i want to do now is just quickly i'm just going to grab a specific color i'm just going to grab this specific color here put it in there and grab this one here as well put it in there there you are so we have only a single color which is a probably a red color here save this and maybe the border width we will remove that one refresh there we are. So now we have this here. What I want to do now is convert this into a line. And all we have to do for that in a scatter, which is quite nice, is to say show line with capital L, set this on true, comma. And maybe what we could do here as well, if I save this, 
I'll show you. We have now a very uh, straight line here. So we, what we want to do, create a more elastic line, is to convert the line or at least give it a tension of 0 0.4. So basically, we, we reduce the, the line of or the reduce the tension of the line because now these are straight lines. So basically, it's a rubber band, but the tension is very extreme, which is a default set on one here, as you can see. Oh, sorry, on zero. So if you create a tension with 0 0.4, we create a more elastic line. You can see here now we have nice curves here. That looks beautiful. All right. So now we have this here, and I removed the border width here. So that's why the border is now more thicker and more visual. So what we're going to do now is let's remove this one as well. We don't need that anymore. What we need to solve now is this, because this is what I'm always referring to with data structures. This is a part of a data structure, and the x and y by default is basically x and y scale here. And if you have seen my other video about data structures, we can even convert this into different terms here. So it will be not x and y, but maybe this would be value uh, ABC, and then we can make here a certain value for that. However, I will cover another video for that. I don't want to go too to make it too complicated here for now. So we have this. However, you might say, well, hold on. I have a problem now because maybe you have, maybe you get the data from your database in PHP or MySQL, or you get it from uh, uh, Express or any kind of database and your data array or your array values is maybe uh, X equals, and then we have here this, and we're going to grab all of these, uh, sorry, x is 1 up to 7, so we say here this, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and then we have another one here, and you say, hold on, we have this one here, which is the y value, and the y value will be this data here, so I'm going to copy this, for the sake of this, let's remove all of this, just to clean up the data here, and then we say, all right, so how do I convert this into something very nice or neat like this, all right? So that's what we're going to do now. And this is the most important part here. So how do we convert this? So to convert this, let's give it a proper name here, or we're going to create a new constant. This is our constant. We just say this will be our line array, proper name or any kind of name you can give it. So what I want to do eventually is I want to create a a loop we can call the for loop but what we're going to use here is the function map a map array dot map function or basically array this is the array so the dot map method is very powerful because with that we can start to loop to a certain value and then combine these two together where we can start to create these kind of structures here because these structures are what we need and then we have this nice constant that we can just say data equals this specific constant and we can remove all of this so we have this nicely done. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, we're going to say here a certain value. In this case, I'm going to grab the x value here. So we say the constant x dot map. So we're going to work with this. And this map value, or basically this map method, basically says the following. We're going to loop through all of these items. But if you remember with loop, we need to do a for loop. And then you have x equals 0. And then you had to do minus 1 uh, because of the length. So with map, we don't have to do that. That would mean that we don't have to do these extra features. All we have to do is here, we work with this here, and it will understand how many items there are. So it will, will, it will loop, sorry, it will loop to every specific value here. So what we're going to do here, we're going to say here, x value, that will be one of our values, and a comma, we're going to say index. And this is very nice because with the index here, we should say, this is, remember, in array, we are working with index, and the map will grab automatically the index value. So we say here, the x value will be 1, but the index equals 0. Why? Because an array in JavaScript has a 0 base counting, meaning that this would be index 0, index 1, etc., etc. All right? Very important to understand these kind of concepts. So then we say here, a array, for, so an arrow function, meaning that we're going to create a function out of it. And then here... Make sure you have the parentheses here because we have here this parentheses as well. Then we say here, curly braces. And then between here, we're going to loop through all of these items. To do this, we're going to say here, a let. And this let will be our line object. Basically, we're going to create an object now. And this object equals curly braces here. 
Why? Because we want to have these items in here for every specific x and y value. So we have this kind of structure. However, we're still in an array. It understands that this is still an array. X is still an array. So basically, independently, it just shows like this because of here. However, it will not loop through this. It will just be in here because this one only needs to be looped with the values here. All right. So I don't want to make it, I don't want to explain too much because it might be confusing if I explain it. So let's start to look at what we're going to do with that. So then we say here, our line object, which is basically this one here. In here, what are we going to add? Well, we're going to add here a dot x, which is basically this specific value here. If we do this, and then we say you equal what exactly? Well, we're going to equal the x value. We're going to put it in here. What I want to do as well, just for the console log, just to make sure you understand what I'm saying here, is to show you a visual representation. We're going to do a console log on the x value, but we also will console log on the index. So you will see here that this index will be zero on this specific value here. Save this. Refresh. Nothing happens here, but if we open up here, you can see here 1 equals 0. Second one, which is this second value here, is index number 1, etc., etc. All right. This is very, very important. If you are confused by it, we can even convert it into a y. If you make y, we will loop through this one here. So let's look at that. You will see as well. So this might be even more easier to understand because here it starts with 18. And 18, the starting point of 18 is 0. Then we have here another one, starting point of 12 equals 1. That's index 1, all right? So we have these here, but I want to start with x here. So we're going to save this here, refresh. All right, so since we have now here the index value, this index value will also show us when we get the y value. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let's get the y value here. We say y, and I'm going to make here a uh, index value in that, or sorry, the array value. So basically what it says here is 0, 1, etc., etc. So we get the array, which value specifically. So let's save this and refresh. Now you can see here 1. The first one is 18, which is correct. That is the case. And then the second one would be number 12. And you can see here as well, it shows you step by step all of these items. Beautiful. So what we're going to do now is basically this, convert that into the object here. So we have this one here. We have that one set, and we can even, if you would do your console log, just a final console log, just to show you the line array. Save this, refresh, you can see here. All right, now it's undefined. All right, fair enough. That's basically this one. We still have to do some items here. So let's start to uh, do something here because I realized we forgot here the return value. What we're going to do here is two items. I'm going to copy this because we don't only have a X value, we will also specify a y value and the y value is this item here that we had copy this and then here once we're done here we need to return it that's why it's undefined so far because it didn't return anything it just loops to a value so the return will eventually recognize this specific constant with all the items in here so return and the return will be of course the line object save this refresh now you can see here, it grabs here the x value 1 and the y value of 18. Beautiful. So now we have this here and probably now you already figure out we can just copy this. And then all we need to do here is just delete everything here, including these brackets here. Why? Because it's already an array as I indicated before. It understands it's an array. And if it's an array, it by default, it already contains these brackets. So we just put in here the constant value here. If I save this now and I refresh, Oh, all right, line object is not defined. All right, fair enough. So let's see here, what is the issue here? Of course, the line object is this, but this here is the line array because that's the constant. So I'm going to copy that, put it in here, line array, save that, refresh, and there we are. So now we have a nice value here. This works beautiful. So if I change this, so let's say here, because remember, this is still a, scatter chart we can still start somewhere midway here so let's start with the first one let's say here the first item which is the x makes uh somewhere at five and this one here the y value will be 10. save this refresh you can see here now what happens it starts here first and then it go back here and then etc etc and then it moves around around here 
very important here what I want to show you is for example this maybe you say hold on I want this to be shown as zero fair enough let's go down here into the skills you can see here the Y is set on begin at zero what I want to do here is as well for the X axis and this scale here make sure you have a comma here and then we say here begin at zero and this will be true as well make sure you have a comma here so we'll understand that there's a continuation of the array save that refresh and now it starts here and then it goes there and etc etc and you can see here the zero zero it's it's by default put on here in zero zero so the scale shows you properly as well so this is basically the way how you can play around with the data objects or sorry the data structures and convert items here into nice easy to read data structures put it in here we could make another line here if you want another line you could just copy this you just copy this as well well let's do one for fun i'm going to copy this put it in here but then what i want to do here i'm going to convert these two exactly or i switch them let's switch them and see what happens then if i copy this put it here in the y all right and then what i want to do here exactly the same except here this constant should be a different name the reason why is we cannot use two times the same constant here it should be let's say one or number two let's make this number two i'll make this number two then we'll grab here this x this x must be now of course number two here it's in there all right we put this here number two or on this can be maintained this here should be on number two and an object number two because this is now of course a new number then we have here it says here the y this was of course from this here this refers to number two number two we turn object number two and this of course the line array number two and in here we could just copy this another data set in your comma put in here and this will be let's make this zero so i want to make this a slightly darker color or zero zero so we, so it will be more bluish whatever blue it is i'm not sure but that's all right so we have the line array will be of course number two as well because this is number two then we can say here a uh, red line am i correct yes this is the red line then we have another line here will be a blue line and then if we save that we have this here all right refresh oh let's see what happened here on line 93 there's an error probably a comma i forget somewhere 93 uh let's see 93 all right what we're missing here all right so what we're missing here is basically a parentheses uh let's see we put it here in parentheses all right so now it works fine you can see the constant changes its color correctly refresh here again and there you are so now we get these kind of lines and as you can see it is absolutely a weird line it doesn't make any sense and the reason why it doesn't make any sense here is because this is a scatter line that follows a chronological order of this here so whatever the order is that is how it works but of course this is basically how we work with it and now we have two specific lines here created so if you have any question with it or you want to understand more better the data structures i have another video as well about how to use data structures more in depth so there's a lot more to data structures and i always said data structures interesting right now you have learned how to create basically a data structure based on x and y and i will make another video as well how we can go more deeper into creating data structures but if you want to have the foundation of data structures this video is useful for you as well